Welcome to Discovering. Just like fishing in the spring and fall, ice fishing has its own set of special characteristics and techniques. I wanted to know more. Who better to talk to? Professional fisherman, Mark Martin. And where better than Mark Martin's Ice Fishing Vacation School on Lake Ogebic. And I'm gonna show everybody how they should rig their lures in order to make them work and make that jig work, make everything work the way the manufacturer invented it. So sit back, put your feet up, it's Monday night and time for discovering. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone. Forest thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak. Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known. The black bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields. Call of the timber wolf, the loon's lonesome trill, the eagle soaring high above, the trout lies deep and still. These are what I treasure, the only way I measure feelings that I have for this fine land. There is so much to discover when you're a long time lover of northern Michigan. As the morning rolled on, the temperature dropped to 22 below zero. Add in gusty winds for wind chills in the 40 to 50 below range. The day starts with a hot cup of coffee and a hearty breakfast at Antonio's. Then the sound of snowmobiles, warming up one by one. I'm at the Timbers Resort in Berglund on the shores of Lake Gogebic. It's once again time for Mark Martin's Ice Fishing Vacation School. Students here benefit from a wealth of knowledge passed on by Mark along with his group of top-notch pro staffers. I'm here to visit with Mark and hopefully learn a bit more about what makes fish tick when the top of the lake is frozen. You know, it's been a pretty good day. Most of the students have caught fish uh, and had hits and some uh, have got some nice fish, walleyes, perch, uh, and northern pike, you know, a little bit of everything here today. And, and so this is a slow part of the day right here. It just, it happens. And so, you know, I'm gonna try to attract these fish in, you know, using every kind of method because it's just way too cold to be, you know, moving around at all. What you want to do is just keep working these lures and to attract them in and watching your graph at all times. Oh, there's a fish down there. Dang, I pray he came back. Come on. No, oh, I just, he came back over. I think he just had the end of the minnow. I don't think he got it. I'm gonna pound it on the bottom. They're really hard. Down on the bottom again, I gotta call him in. Oh, wee doo 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 doo. <laughs> just grabbing the end of that minnow and not getting, grabbing the whole minnow. He's there, I can see see the bottom. It's a little thicker on the screen. Here, here he is. You can see the difference in the bottom. That's why you have power gain up because otherwise you wouldn't see that fish there. He's, he's coming back right there right now, just as I'm pointing. He's right there, that's a fish right there. Antagonize him again. I'll see if you follow me up a little bit. Sometimes that'll get him going too. He's just grabbing the end of that minnow. It's giving me a lot of chances. If I had pulled up and checked my minnow, I wouldn't have had those other hits. You can see him coming right there. See how the bottom got just a little thicker? And if you don't have your your graph turned up, you'd never be able to see that fish right there. It'd just look just like the where it's red on to the left right there. But now you can see that fish right there. He looks just like bottom, but it's thicker and, and got a little green to it. Just bring it up just a little bit. I'm gonna pound it on the bottom again. There he is right there, got him. Not a, not a big walleye, but it's a walleye. And he hit that buckshot rattle spoon right there. But that's what, you know, persistent pays off in the 
fishing world, you know. Like I said, he's gonna play with fire for a while, and he's and he he did. He kept coming back, and I baited up twice, rebaited, and finally, whether it's that same one or not, but I teased him and teased him and teased him, and finally, I just raised it, hit bottom, raised it up off of the bottom, and bang, he was right on it. Well, somebody's gonna catch this one someday again. And he'll be big because now he knows what a hook is. Maybe. <laughs> Andy. I caught it on a Guster beaded spoon. Um, marvelous beaded spoon on a hard stick. And you can see it's freezing right up. He just just caught it a few minutes ago and, and he's been catching quite a few on that beaded spoon. So a, a spoon with a little bead on the bend of the hook. It's for perch mainly, but he's been catching walleye and northern pike on it. Yeah, it's, uh, the, the fish are here. It's just a, a brutal Antarctic day out here. <laughs> Beautiful. You can see my new mustache. Oh, I, I, like they got my helmet on, it feels good. <laughs> I'm sticking my ear we'll, back in the shell. All right, we'll let you stick yourself back in there, Brandon. When you are fishing and there are fish around, um, you're you're marking them, and you can't catch them. The only way what you can do is just like I'm doing here right now. You just troll. You got to troll up, stop, pull up, twitch up, stop, twitch up, stop, and when you see a fish that was following your lure break off and disappear you got to quickly get it right back down on the bottom and you pound it right on the bottom just like that just pound it right on the bottom and they get all excited they come rushing right back in you pick it up six inches maybe four inches two inches and you just hold it there fish see that they hear it they coming over because they think fish are feeding off of something on the bottom and they see all this dust that's like wow there is fish feeding on the bottom and they rush into that dust looking for where the food is to get their fair share and and they just grab whatever's there and that's your lure you know a lot of people they're jigging and they'll go oh geez i just missed a fish and the first thing they do is they reel it up and go oh geez they didn't get the bait well, there's no more fish there either because now you took the bait and the, the presentation away from the fish. So if I miss them, immediately I get that presentation so it falls back onto the bottom. So if the fish did grab the bait and take it, he realizes, boy, that tasted pretty good. I want some more. While he sees it fall, the rest of it fall back down, He's he knows he's already wounded that prey and he sees it fluttering around on the bottom down there and he you pick it up like that after you flutter around after a fish hits it that fish is going to come right in and he wants seconds right now right here you have a high quality ball bearing swivel right here right here on the line you see it's not an ant swivel it's a high quality ball bearing swivel so that i don't twist the line because this lure is constant there's a <clears throat> buckshot rattle jig right here it's a glow in the dark but i also put a cross lock snap right on there so that it can swivel and flutter i don't tie the lure directly on it because then it takes away from some of that whipping around when i'm whipping the lure up in the air or i'm jiggling it just a little bit it can it can uh, swing back and forth and there's another thing that i did to this lure right here it had a treble hook on it i put a single hook on it I, I make you know and what that does you can see right there you know with a treble hook the the minnow would be right up by the spoon and then the the fish has to come in and get the spoon the minnow and the treble for you to hook it right here when you're jiggling this and i'll show you when you're jiggling it, look at that see how that minnow wants to kind of flop off to this side and then flop off to that side quite a bit it's almost like having two lures down there they see this thing wobbling one way this going the another way they come up and they grab that minnow they get the whole minnow every time in their mouth and then i always hook the minnow 
from the back of the head forward, whether it's just a minnow head or half a minnow, because when I'm jigging it, the when you're jigging it, it, it shoots out towards the fish and comes back, shoots out. So the fish thinks it's either getting away sometimes or coming at them, and the reaction is they gotta kill it. And, and I, I always take a flash out here. Watch when I do it, watch the, the glow start. See it start glow down the lateral line right there. And that's now, now you can put it in the water and attract fish from greater distances. So I always have a little flash in my pocket to charge my glow in the dark lures. <laughs> What we've got, we've got a slip bobber with a sucker minnow set about maybe 10 inches up off bottom. And uh, it just went down here just a second ago. So uh, it's taken out maybe 15, 20 feet of line. And I think we're ready. We're going to see if we can get him hooked up here. Just reel till we feel some weight. And there it is. Down under the snow. Yep, it's walleye. Look, little guy. Walleye all the same. Nice late go gibbic walleye. This has been by far the best rig I've got. That little slip bobber, you know, with two little shot, and got a small number 12 treble. Catching, I mean, walleyes like this. All we're doing to rig these, it's real simple. Nice slip bobber. I've got it set, we're in about 10 feet of water. I'll take a nice sucker minnow, and I'm gonna take that real small treble hook. We're just taking one hook and going right in front of that dorsal fin. The other two are up. We put it down in there and let them go. A lot of times people think line is line, and you know, I guess I was one of them. What I like personally, this is my personal thing, is I like uh, fluorocarbons, the Vanish fluorocarbons by Berkeley, because they're almost like fire line because they don't have much stretch. But they are kind of like a monofilament, but they're fluorocarbon, so they're clearer. I got good sensitivity. The fish have a harder time seeing it, especially when the winter time when they can come up and you can't move away from them, and they're the ones that have to determine that if they're going to hit. And the other thing is there's hardly any stretch. So when I do get a hit, I get a positive hook set instead of line stretch and maybe just getting the fish the hook in them but not the barb and the fish getting away this way i'm going to go right through the bone i'm going to go right through the grizzle i'm going to go right through the flesh of the mouth of the fish and be able to land that fish more times than not so if you're looking for you know a good line for ice fishing try fluorocarbon and some people they'll tie you know use fire line or other super lines and tie a, a length of fluorocarbon on there with a little ball bearing swivel like I just showed you in between that's fine too but I personally like all fluorocarbon when I'm jigging in the winter time and if depending on what I'm fishing for you know six eight pound test right now I got six pound on here I don't worry about the fish breaking it but because it's a tough line the other thing with fluorocarbon and if you're in pike infested waters the outside coating of the fluorocarbons is tough and it gets in between the pike's teeth when it's small in diameter and they have a heck of a time cutting that. Well, they can cut it if you're pulling on it and they're jerking their head back and forth, but if you're just fighting, ooh, there's a fish down there, nice fish. I better pay attention here. You can see it on the graph right there. I got pounded on the bottom because he, he, he looked like he went away, and I'm going to hold it up an inch or so and see what I... I called him in by... There! Oh, I just missed him. Probably seen that on the... He didn't get the bait, so I'm pounding it back on the bottom again. I'm going to pick it up. Come on. He's still there. I'll put it back on the bottom. There he is. Got him. He's 
fighting. Mr. Pike. Mr. Pike, we are just talking about you and how you don't cut the line if you... There he is, right there. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, you know, I just kept pounding the bottom and, and, uh, just work this fish in, having to, well, I was talking to you folks right there on TV land, uh, I glanced back at my Lawrence Elite 5 and told me the whole story and it told me what I had to do right away. So you've seen how I react when I do notice fish there. So that's a, you got to be like right on it. This one went right through the bone and right through the grizzle. Like I said, see, see what that fluorocarbon will do? He'll go right through that bone and cartilage right there on that hook set. I'm going to have to get my hemostats out here. There we are. We're going to put this baby right back in here. He'll grow up and one of you people out there will be able to catch him maybe when he gets to be 20 pounds. How about that? <laughs> there you go, guy. <laughs> what this is we're jigging with a uh, an orange or a pink jig with some glow glitter on it tipped with a uh, fathead minnow we're fishing 10 foot of water out here on the edge of the weeds uh, it's kind of like cabbage okay it hit hard so let's see what we got been catching a few legal eyes today oh, that's a pike Here we go, Lake Gugibic Pike. Well, when I go through the ice here for larger game fish, I drill a three-hole uh, pattern. Um, I use the hole closest to myself in the triangle for my uh, Vexlar or ice probe. And then that gives me two open holes there to get the fish through. Uh, when you get the fish down to the bottom of the ice, I bring my rod tip underneath the water, give myself about a six inches, eight inches of uh, line and then i pull straight up and i just get my fish get the head out reach it to grab it i hate to have ice on my line so i just push it down every once in a while sometimes i'll hook it on the ice and pull it up but i always keep pushing the ice down my line so that uh, it doesn't interfere with my jigging action and my feel you can see right there you can see the ice on my line in just those few seconds I was jigging and I just kind of push it down. You can see it building up right there. I push it down. So when I drop it now, it's still on my line, but now it's under the water and now the water is water. So it's gonna turn that ice back into water again instead of having to chip it off, put it in your mouth or whatever. See all that, the ice on my line right there. Just been jigging a little bit. You don't even want that much. I don't want that much. I see people with it all gobbed up. So the first thing I do is I go right above it and I start pushing it down and you can see it right there on the line there building up as I'm pushing right down on it. And so now I know that's under the water. Like I said, I put it back down and I'll jig it here a little bit and we're gonna pick it back up and see if it's still there after a little bit. There's no more ice on that line anywhere right there. You can see where it's starting to build it again just because it's so cold. We'll just push it down right there. And they're, they're, they're just going to get that ice right off by putting it under the water. You know, people make a mistake by, you know, not letting their lure do the right things. You know, so I, I may be jigging all the time, but a lot of times I'll just hold it there and with the swivel that's on there and the lure been flopping around and swimming it's down there right now just slowly turning so if there's a fish down there he didn't want my aggressive reaction he sees it turning real slow and on the line on twisting they'll come up and grab it the the other thing too is when i'm not seeing fish like i say i like to pound the bottom but i also like to do this 
I like to take big sweeps like that. Get crazy because now you're attracting fish. They can feel it. They can hear it. And now they can see it. I'm getting them to see and feel it from a further distance and hone in on it. And once I start to see them come in, I go, oh, there's a fish there. So I immediately let it go to the bottom, pound it on the bottom again, pick it right up, hold it there, boom. Got a big one on. Yeah. Right next to closing time. Right. Don't know what it is yet. Grab that buckshot with a single hook. Fighting like crazy. Big old northern. There we go. <laughs> There we go. Nice fish. Hammered that thing. Yeah, he hammered it. <laughs> he hammered it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Nice fluorocarbon line right there. It's pretty tough stuff. Now to get my hands out of here without getting them ripped apart. There it is. Yeah. I thought it might be a big walleye at witching time right here, but. We'll uh, put them outside. In fact, I'll just lay it right out here on the... Well, that's it for this week. A big thanks to Redline Sport Marine in Norway for setting me up with a snowmobile. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week right here on Discovering. Oh, oh, we got him. We got him, man. <laughs> yeah, he, just 15. Just 15. Caught him all day. Must be about the 15th or 18th fish. Mine stuck in the bottom of the hole. That must mean he's a five pounder, baby, Mark. <laughs> there, oh, rain. <laughs> Thought I had to get the gap. <laughs>